Let's talk about My Best Friend's Exorcism, the latest teen horror comedy from Amazon Studios. There will be major spoilers ahead as I'm going to be recapping the movie, offering up my own personal opinions on it as just an ordinary guy who watches stuff. So getting into this one, we are in 1988, and we know that because we kick off with Take On Me by Aha. We are introduced to besties Gretchen, played by Amaya Miller, and Abby, played by Elsie Fisher, who not not so long ago popped up in the new Texas Chainsaw movie. Gretchen comes from a religious family and dons a cross necklace, yet that can't stop her from an encounter with the unknown. The gals get together, no stupid boys allowed, and break out the Ouija board. Much more of a kaplunk man myself, but regardless, some spooky goings on occur. Hmm, I wonder what's gonna be hiding in the cupboard with the drawn out obvious rise in tension. It's definitely not gonna be horror movie trope number 23 of the group boyfriend playing a prank is it? Oh yeah it is. Wonderful. It's gonna be one of those movies isn't it? Well actually when our disposable teens slap some LSD in their gobs it can only go one way from here. As Gretchen and Abby head towards horror movie trope number 62. A dark building with a disturbing local legend surrounding it. And naturally when they get frightened we get horror movie trope number 46. Character falls suddenly over nothing and hurts leg. Before Gretchen is swiped away by horror movie trope up number 62, an evil modulated voice. And are soon after jump scared by horror movie trope number 17, a little furry critter. They find Gretchen, but she's not the same cheery person as before. <laughs> oh no, she's horror movie trope 78, an emotional parallel to her normal self. 20 minutes into this film, already there was a lot of glaring recycling swirling around, and sadly, my best friend's exorcism didn't ever really stray from that path. It instead played it safe and stayed firmly in the slow lane at a steady speed in second gear. I think the concept of taking a high school possession type movie, which already is a saturated angle, and approaching it down a horror comedy route was a cool choice to go for, but a lot of the comedy here I too felt was kinda safe. I feel like there's a difference between a movie written to be a comedy and a movie that has some comedic moments in it. This film felt like the latter to me, despite advertising itself as the former. The comedy elements aren't exaggerated enough to be an obvious parody of teen possession movies, they aren't sharp enough to it feeling ripe and fresh, and they aren't frequent enough to a point where the movie feels worthy of its genre label. There is something I found genuinely hilarious deeper into the film, but I'll get to that later. The reason why I don't think the film overall needs comedy in its label is because it strays very far from being a comedy, with some truly sledgehammering moments of seriousness, and there's one thing that stood out to me more than anything else that I took out of the film. Something I had rather a large issue with here in terms of a thematic exploration came from Abby and how after seeing Gretchen has been acting strangely since that night in the woods, she uses rape as the reason why Gretchen has been acting strangely, which I found to be a really horrible concept because it was a fabrication by Abby. She goes to Gretchen's parents and tells them as well as telling other people matter of factly that Gretchen was raped, when she just read about rape in an article and decided to use that as an angle for why Gretchen's been strange. If Abby had said she believed that Gretchen may have been, that's a huge difference to going around telling people that's exactly what happened. It's way too heavy a subject to just airdrop into this fairly whimsical film. Like the film is an easy watch for the most part, kind of film you can just stick on and get through, so to hold two barrels up with such a weighted subject felt really badly handled and forcefully shoehorned. It didn't suit this film's vibe at all and it utilised that theme in such a passive way, to a point where it came across as kinda ignorant. Normally I let these sorts of topics slide in my reviews if they're handled in a way that could be justified within the creative skin of the movie, but here it just didn't fit whatsoever and I genuinely was taken aback by its use. I would like to clarify that my interpretation and reaction to this theme being used comes from someone who hasn't been personally affiliated with a victim of that theme, so I'd be interested to hear what you guys think of the use of the theme here in the comments. Anyway, continuing on from this, it's the tone I think that's the real problem here. The spectrum of what the film wants you to feel is so scattered. Does it want to be a parody or not? 
not? Does it want to be a horror comedy? Does it want to be a serious piece? Because, like, the disparity between its lightest moment and its darkest moment, it's eons apart to a point where the space between everything is all jumbled up with a confused black hole at its centre. And sometimes that black hole sucked logic into it too, such as when Glee is given a brownie by Gretchen and eats it, then has an allergic reaction to the nuts. Like, I'm not sure how much trust these guys have. Probably a fair amount because they're friends and everything, but if I was allergic to nuts, if you hand me any kind of chocolatey food, I'd at least try and play it a little safe and ask what's in it before taking a bite. Might just be me on that one as someone who's not got any allergies, just kind of stuck out to me a bit this one, and felt like it was in the script just as a means for the plot to advance. But even if Glee went, yeah this doesn't have nuts in it does it? And Gretchen's like, nah trust me it's alright, and she still bit it, that would at least go with the character flow of the scene. And generally the movement of the story here does feel quite erratic, but there were some parts I enjoyed for certain. In all these kinds of movies you always end up with horror movie trope number 11, an outsider character who knows everything about the evil and is the one who's got to try save the day, yet here they go down a quite brilliant route of that character being the more inexperienced brother of a bunch of TV Jesus athletes called the Lemon Brothers who pump iron in the name of the Lord. I thought that angle did offer up the most hilarity in the film and Christopher Lowell chewed the scenery to dust as Christian in the best way possible. He was the highlight of the entire thing for me. I do think that both Miller and Fisher did well here and there's something about about Elsie Fisher in particular, where I could see her becoming quite an iconic scream queen in future. I can't put my finger on it, maybe it's because she's effectively the twin of Maisie Williams, but I do think she's got the potential and capability of carrying a horror movie as a lead. So I would like to see her again in some stronger films, as this one, as well as the Texas Chainsaw remake, as I've previously covered, were both rather topsy-turvy to me. I came out of my best friend's exorcism not knowing what its intention was. The Lemon Brothers, horror movie tropes, and stuff like Abby stabbing Gretchen with a fire poker, making her make deadite noises, which clearly took a leaf from the Evil Dead. All that stuff combined would make you think it's a tongue-in-cheek genre tribute. Yet a lot of the film is the mirror image of that, with frequent clunky seriousness involved. I'd say overall it was an entertaining watch and not difficult to get through, but I came out of it absolutely wishing it had chosen a direction and stuck with it, rather than feeling like multiple films sandwiched together with out of date filling, and an ending that was laughably abrupt. However, I did quite like the what happened to the rest of the characters compilation at the end of the film, that did get a chuckle. But overall, that's my honest review of 2022's My Best Friend's Exorcism. Let me know what you thought of this one in the comments below, whether you agree or disagree with anything I've said, and don't worry, it's okay to be wrong sometimes, cause we are all only human. If you enjoyed this video, a cheek sub would be much appreciated to help the channel grow and other than that I've been Connor from Unleash the Ghouls join us next time for another decadent dissection of some of the latest horrifying films and series but till then cheers out